Hi everybody! Welcome and thank you so much for checking out my channel. My name is Tani and I'm an independent author and somebody who just really loves great stories. So on this channel I talk about writing, books I've enjoyed, and lessons I've learned on my publishing journey. One of the skills that I've picked up as an indie author is book formatting, and that is something that I've actually come to really enjoy, especially for print books. And it's something that honestly I think I've gotten pretty good at over the years. I will pop up some images on the screen so you can see what some of my books look like on the inside. I have done the print formatting myself for all of these books, and I plan to continue doing that for any books that I self-publish in the future. I've gotten several questions and comments about my book formatting, and people are usually pretty surprised to learn that I do my formatting in Microsoft Word. I realize that Microsoft Word is not the best formatting software out there, but it is something that a lot of writers have access to already, and you can actually do a lot with it if you know how to. In this video series, I am sharing some tips and tricks that I've learned that hopefully you can use to format your own books if you decide that you want to do that as well. All right, so today I am going to show you guys how to format your back matter and include whatever back matter you would like to put in your book. So we have our pirate book here that we've been working on. We're going to scroll all the way down to the bottom. Um, the back matter, if you don't know, comes at the very end of the book after the book itself is finished, and it might include things like the glossary, acknowledgements, or a little note to your reader asking them to write a review about the author section. Anything like that that comes after the book is finished is what we are going to be working on today. The first thing that you want to do is make sure that you have separated your back matter from the rest of the book. So I'm going to go over here and I want to make sure that there is a section break right here so that we start a new section on the next page. So I'm going to turn on this little guy up here and that tells me that there is already a section break so we are good to go. And just as a reminder, if you don't know how to insert a section break, we'll do one right here. Um, we have this page break but we can actually just do a section break there as well if we want to. So I'm going to go right here to the end of this line and we are going to go over to layout and breaks and go down to section breaks. We want that to start on the next page. And so when we do that, then we get a nice little section break there. Um, I do have a bunch of extra spaces right here that I'm just going to go ahead and delete and then everything looks good. So I don't need this guy turned on anymore. I'll just shut him off. From here, you can really just copy and paste whatever you would like to include in your back matter. It can be anything you like. Sometimes your back matter will end up looking like it's connected to the front matter and it will have like page numbers and stuff. You can go in here and delete those page numbers if you would like. Usually what ends up happening is that you'll have this link to previous will be turned on and so that will make the page numbers show up in here. But if you just turn that off, then you should be able to change the footers down here without getting rid of all of the page numbers in the rest of the book. The other thing that you might want to consider is what side of the book that you want your back matter to start on. So down here we can see that this is page 24, which means it's an even page and it will be on the left hand side of the book which means that my glossary starts on the right hand side of the book, which is fine with me. I'm okay with that. I would actually like it to start on the right hand side of the book. But let's say that I have a whole bunch of extra text in here. I'm going to go ahead and copy and paste some stuff so that we can make that go all the way to the end there. So now I have this where the book actually ends on the right side, the right hand side, which means this glossary is going to be directly on the back of that and it's going to be on the left side. I will show you what that looks like. If you can't visualize that in your head, a good way to do that is just to go into print and then it will show you what that looks like. So we're going to go over here. We can see the book ends on the right side and then when we flip the page, we have the glossary on the left. Some people don't mind that. Some people might want the glossary to actually start over here. If that's the case and you want that to start on a new a new page, you can just go into layout again and click on that page break 
And you can just put a simple page break in there. It doesn't have to be a section break and we'll just bring it down so it matches the rest of our back matter here. But now we can see if we go into print again, we have the book ending over here. And then if we flip the page, we have the glossary starting on that next page. And then if we flip over, we have our reader, dear reader section and our acknowledgements and then the about the author section. You can figure that out however you'd like. Maybe you want those pages looking differently. You can just insert blank pages if you need to for some sections. It's really up to you however you want to do that. I do have just some basic back matter things here set up that I will leave in the document so that when you download it you can check that out and um, format it however you'd like. But there's other things you can include back here. Some people like to include a preview of the next book in the series or other books that you have written that might be in the same genre. So those are all different kinds of things that you can include in your back matter. And hopefully that helps you know how you set that up and how you separate it from the rest of the book so that you don't end up with any wonky formatting. If you look at the description box down below, I have linked a sample Word document that you can download and play around with some of this formatting yourself. It's a document that has already been formatted. It looks just like the one that I just showed you in the video. If this video was useful to you, please hit that like button and be sure to leave a comment down below to let me know what you think or to let me know if there's other things that you want me to cover in this video series. Be sure to subscribe and ring the bell if you want to be notified as soon as I post more videos. Thank you guys so much for watching and I hope you have a fantastic day. Bye!